really sorry about that. My dogs decided to be dreadful <laughs> in the middle of that last video. So let me kind of recap and start from the beginning and uh, see if I can maybe be a little bit more articulate this time. <laughs> so I have a bunch of harps. People are curious about why I have a bunch of harps. Uh, usually it's not musicians that are curious about why I have a bunch of harps. Guitarists never even ask, they know. <laughs> anyway. But it's because each one has a different capability and is capable of doing different things or developed for a different purpose. So I want to go ahead and start with the little one and go to the big one today and kind of introduce how they are different. So this one is the smallest one we'll look at today and that is a Reese Harp Harpsicle. This has 26 strings, it's fully levered, and each lever means that the string can play in two positions. Um, so, for example, when I hit my C, C, I can make one of my C's sharp if I physically manipulate the lever at the top of the harp. Now, that doesn't change all of my C's, only one of them. So the difference with the pedal harp is I can use my pedal to change all of the C's on the harp at the same time. So. I can do all my sharps and flats with my feet instead of with my hands. So that is the capability with this harp. Now this is interesting. It's got 26 strings and here is middle C. So this harp has one octave below middle C and has two and a half above middle C, which essentially is up to here on my harp and down to here. So this is a solid of the mid-range of my harp. Now this is a little bit different than my Concert Grand. These strings are made of nylon. On my Concert Grand they are made of gut because they sound a whole lot better. Uh, but the string tension on this little guy is less than a third of what is on this harp. So when I play this harp, it's got a nice resonant tone, but I'm not really doing a whole lot of work with my fingers at all. On this guy, I have to pull a lot harder, but I get a lot bigger sound because of the larger resonance chamber. Let's take a look at this other harp. So this is a Serrano 34, and this is kind of the bridge between the teeny teeny harp and the big harp. So this is a professional lever harp. Uh, this is a Serrano 34. This was designed for use playing traditional music uh, with mariachi orchestra or with traditional Celtic music. Um, it also has full levers and can play uh, double action, so you can do the sharps and flats on this one as well. Again, not with your feet, but this guy has a lot more of a bass range than that teeny tiny harp goes. So this is the middle C on this guy, and I've got two full octaves Whoa. <laughs> beneath that, which means I am tracking to about here on my pedal harp. Pebble Harp still has an entire octave of bass below that, which is why this is the big guy. Um, so I picked the tune that I can play on all three of these harps, and I wanted to show you the difference in what the harps can do and how I execute each one. So I picked a little Chuck Berry tune that is in the key of C major. And the biggest difference that you'll notice between how I play it on the little harps and on the big harp is the big harp can make a glissando. Now all that is is to sharp the seventh and to flat the fifth of a scale, uh, flat the fourth. So on this one, I would make that fourth, that F a flat, create the inharmonic, and then create an inharmonic between the seventh degree and the octave. So that puts my harp into a pentatonic scale, which means that I can't really play a bad note on it. Unfortunately, there's no B sharp F flat lever for, for my little harps. So we're going to have to do something a little bit different. But here is how this would go.
basic motif of that tune. And if you notice, you can't really hear much of a bass part on there. I'm trying. But if my lowest bass string is the C below middle C, there's not a whole lot of oomph in that. So let's swap off, grab a slightly larger harp, <laughs> and show you how that sounds with a fuller bass register, but still not the ability to make accidentals. Move that away so I don't whack it with my elbow. All right. <laughs> the same glissando that you would get on a piano if you just raked your finger down the keys. And I mean, I do that, but it only works in the key of C major. Uh, so if you want a Jerry Lee Lewis, you better do it in C. Now, how this translates differently to the pedal harp is I'm going to throw in some accidentals that I didn't get to use when I was playing the smaller harp. So check this out. about 90 pounds so when you smack it nothing happens you can wail on that bass string all you want with the and so you can create like a rhythmic percussive bass style on a larger heavier harp like this and you're not going to harp knock the harp off your lap the problem with this now that harp weighs about 90 pounds this harp only weighs about 25 pounds so if you start smacking this harp around, you're going to wind up with some problems, but you can do it just a little bit. So I can create a bass line that... But I have to keep myself in check here because these are not wire strings. These are nylon wrap strings. I think the, the bottom three are wires but they have a much uh, less of a string tension on them. So it feels like I'm kind of playing like looser strings and it doesn't require as much force. So if I were to use the same amount of force to play this harp that I used to play this harp, it would be unpleasant to listen to and it would knock the harp halfway across the room. So that is something that I'm definitely having to learn. Let's take a look at another little tune to kind of show you, ah, here we go. So, this is an example of the keys that this harp can play in. If I lower all of my levers, I wind up... Oh, that's not what I was trying to do at all, is it? Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to go to be an E major. Now, all you music theory nerds know that I'm going to need four sharps to do that. F, C, G, D. No, F... Yeah, F, C, F, C, G, D. 
So I'm going to put all of my levers up, which means that the three flat levers are going to be raised. And also I have four sharps on my harp now, so I should be in the key of E major. For this, all I have to do is put in a couple of pedals and bam, there I am in E major. All right, anyway. So I'm going to start playing this tune on the teeny weeny harp, and then I will switch to the medium sized harp and then I will finish up with the big harp and then you will see what I mean hopefully. <laughs> so these are available to rent right now. I wanted to get something that was a real instrument but affordable enough and uh, convenient enough for someone who wasn't a harpist already to think hey I can do that. So I am renting these. Uh, they come with a little package with a couple of lessons in the rental for the harp so let me know if this is something you're interested in trying. Spoiled pedal harpist has forgotten how to do the thing. All right. sounds when we throw it with a little bit of extra bass. <laughs> bass register. So here is what that sounds like. string tensions. Um, I struggle with this serana because I pull too hard because I'm used to playing on this thing. Um, this probably has about double the string tension string per pound per, uh, per string, so makes it a little bit interesting. I want to do one more tune for you and show you what these little harps were made to do. So 
I'll play a little traditional Irish tune for you. Uh, this one is made popular by my buddy Turla O'Carolan. He was a Celtic bard back at about 1350 in ancient Ireland. And he made this a job. He would go around from bar to bar with his harp singing saucy songs about the king for money. Gee, Bob, I don't know who does that. <laughs> so this is called the Castle of Dromore. And uh, I will start on the little harp like Turla would have had. Okay. He would not have had all these double action levers. That's why this song is in the key of C major. He would have kept it real simple. And I can't see, so I'm gonna move this. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to be all slick and look around corners, I can't, sorry. <laughs> I know you were pretending there wasn't a music stand in this video for the first part. <laughs> because that is what it was written for. However, our traditional harp can also bust out a groove on this one. Let's see how we do with a little bit more bass. You know me, I'm all about the bass. I love it. <laughs> oh, no, no. We don't want a sharp. No, we don't. Also, fun fact, a harp is actually a percussion instrument, which is something that a lot of people don't know. Um, a piano is also a percussion instrument because of the hammer action striking the string when it sounds. A harp is a percussion instrument because your finger is that uh, string strike. So in case you wondered why they put the harps next to the percussion in the orchestra, now you know. of why why all these harps they are different I swear and they're good for different tools for different things 
If you have any curiosity about learning how to play the harp, let me know. That is what those little harpsicles are for. I have three and I'm ready to rent them out and happy to teach you if you would like to learn. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. Uh, my plan is to hopefully do some more informational videos about harp technique and the history of the harp. So if you like that sort of content, please tune in. Thank you very much for watching. See ya.